Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last year or so, I've been focusing my attention on a series called Lethe Jawar, the King's Daughter. I've started in the last uh, month or so a new series called Lethe and Marie. If Lethe and Jawar were the founding mothers of Quebec, then Lethe and Marie were the founding grandmothers. They truly are the beginning of the beginning of New France. So I wanted to explore their stories and see um, what we could discover about ourselves and about these amazing women who crossed an ocean to give us a new chance. So let's, um, let's start. Before we begin, let me remind you ways that you can support the channel. The first three involve you and they keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. Please make sure you do that if this is something you wanna do. The next three ways are ways to grow the channel. Kofi, Etsy, and Patreon are all ways of showing your support. And I do appreciate those of you who have climbed aboard and I will be posting uh, my Patreons very shortly. Um, and um, and want to honor their contribution to my channel. Let's begin, shall we, and get to know our fille à marie of episode 10. Les filles à marie came before les filles du roi. They came originally, uh, not as a collective group. Between 1634 and 1662, there were approximately 260 women. Not a great deal of um, potential for growth in the new in the new world, and this is why the king ultimately began the program known as the Fille du Roi. But let's explore these extraordinary women individually and get to know their stories. I think you're going to find that you learn a great deal about Quebec history in um, learning about them as well. Today we're going to be looking at Anne Lemoine. Now you see that spelling. There's also another spelling, Lemoine, L-E-M-O-I-N-E. -E. It, it basically is pronounced the same. This was a viewer request and I am so glad I took, I took it on because it was incredible um, in terms of my uh, digging into real early Quebec history, loved, loved, loved researching this, what turned into an entire family. Let's get to know Anne Lemoyne, shall we? So Anne was born in 1638 in the Paris of Saint-Jacques in Dieppe. The church where she was presumably baptized dates back to the 12th century. Dieppe is of course known for the famous World War II battle, but it was first noticed as a fishing village in 1030. It became at one point the number one port in mid-century France. Another claim to fame is its very famous school of cartography. Um, and her father was an innkeeper. Uh, his, her father's name was Pierre Lemoine and her mom's name was Judith Duchesne. Um, four of her siblings would emigrate to New France. Her brother Charles left in 1641 and would go on to become the founder of Longueuil and create a dynasty that would influence not only New France, but North America as well. Extremely well-known figure. I'll probably at one point do a biography, a biography of him as well. Um, and her sister Jeanne, who came uh, with her, uh, would marry Jacques Lebert, a prominent merchant, merchant um, in early Ville-Marie. Her brother Jacques, would also marry and have 10 children and would invest in land with Anne's future husband. So it was really um, a family affair in terms of coming over to New France. Um, let's have a look at when Anne came over. After the death of their parents, Anne, Jeanne, and their brother Jacques went to New France to join their older brother Charles. And so obviously they knew that he had made his fame and fortune and he was well established there by then. So he was eager, eager to have his siblings join him. And so they did. The groom that would eventually find her, his name was Michel Messi de Saint-Michel and he was born about 1641 in the commune of Saint-Denis-le-Thibault in France. His parents were David Messi and Marguerite Var. And saint denis de thibault is a commune in the Seine-Maritime department in the Normand, Normandy region of France. It's a farming village 
And uh, the church that he would have been baptized dates from the 13th century. Today, there are about 500 people that live there. So how did Michel find his way to New France? Michel would come to New France by 1651. There is a contract in which he is a witness, so we know he was in New France by then. Michel was not alone, as his uncle Jacques was with him. His brother Jacques, his brother Jacques would come to New France uh, about 1660. In an almost impossible to believe twist of fate, Michel and his uncle Jacques would leave New France from Dieppe and would presumably have stayed at Pierre Lemoyne's inn. And his future wife, Anne, would have been about 11 years old. So they kind of crossed paths. And you know, the Lemoyne families and the Macy families were very, very interconnected. So it's highly, highly possible and probable that this indeed happened. Um, it's very likely that Pierre Lemoyne would have shared his son Charles's information in New France, and they would have certainly made that connection as we can see about what happens next. So Michel's life in New France was not an easy one, but he's a fighter beyond all shade of reason. He would be captured by the Indians in 1654 and kept for one year. He escaped and then was again captured in 1661. And although he was given up for dead by then, he emerges again in 1663 alive and kicking. Charles Lemoyne would play an important role in his life. Um, and kind of guiding him. First, he would sell Michel 30 acres of land in 1657 and then presumably played an important role in connecting his sister Anne with Michel, which culminated in their marriage. So Michel and Anne were married on February 24th, 1658 in Montreal. And this is their marriage record. So Anne and Michel would make their home in Montreal uh, let's talk a little bit about Montreal. This wonderful city that would become Montreal started off as Ville-Marie by the founder, Paul de Chomedy, Sœur de Maisonneuve, and was essentially a missionary center. Uh, he, this was founded about May of 1642. The colony would not thrive, and it was on the verge of extinction when Chamonix decided to return to France to recruit about 100 settlers, which would be known as La Grande Recrue. From this small group would evolve the Notre Dame Congregation from Sister Marguerite Bourgeois. And when Montreal was founded, the new colonists were rapidly confronted by a fearsome enemy, the Iroquois. Um, obviously, you've seen already that um, our, our hero, uh, Michel Messi, was captured by them. Um, and so this was a, a extremely fearsome enemy. And before 1665, there were no soldiers. The Carignan Regiment that would eventually show up uh, was some years away. And by 1663, Chamonix establishes a militia. And, and I believe that Michel was part of that militia. And, um, and it was really to protect the city and the citizens. Um, we have a few kind of really uh, beautiful scenes of Montreal during that time. We have the 1666 uh, census and then the more clear to view 1667 census where Michel is listed with Anne um, and their children, Catherine, Jeanne, Marie, Jacques. Uh, Messi is the uncle of Michel, so he's living with him. He's 61 years old. Jacques Messi, that's his son. Uh, that's, I'm not his son, I'm sorry, that's his brother who shows up. Uh, and then we have Maurice Avery. Now, this is very unusual. I've not yet seen in all the hundred and so videos I've done, I've never done one where there's a pensionnat, so there's an actual border there. Um, they have a domestic as well who's not named. They have seven beasts or cows, and they have 30 arpa avala, which we have noted that um, was sold to him by Shalomwan, Anne's brother now his brother-in-law. Let's have a look at the family they created. They would go on to have 12 children. Catherine would marry Etienne Jean and have three children, all of whom made it. Jeanne would marry Ignace Eva and had four children, all of whom made it. Marianne married Jean-Baptiste Bourdard and had 13 children, eight of whom made it. Anne would die in infancy. The second Anne would die in infancy, and a third Anne would finally survive, and she married Gabrielle Seven and had seven children, all of whom made it. Then we have Jean-Michel, who passed away. We have Marguerite, 
who married Pierre Lessard and had one child. We have an unnamed child who passed away. François Michel married Marie-Anne Amiot and had five children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Uh, René would marry uh, Catherine Bissonnet and have four children, all of whom made it. He then married Marie-Madeleine Guillet and had two more children, both of whom made it to adulthood. The family would eventually settle in Varennes. Um, and you can see Varennes where it is in that middle uh, portrait. It's actually just up uh, a little bit north of Longueuil, where Charles, Chal her brother, would have um, created his, his piece of paradise, if you will. And um, let's have a look at the history of Varennes. Uh, it started with the arrival of the Régiment de Carina Salia. It wasn't the place until then. Um, René Gauthier, Sœur de Vérin, was given three concessions by the Intendant Jean Talon. He was given uh, Le Tremblay, La Gabelle, and Varenne. Jacques René, one of his sons, was the second seigneur of Varenne. Five seigneurs later composed the entire Varenne pair, so it kept growing. They were the seigneuries of Cap de Varenne, de Île Saint-Thérèse, de, de Grand Maison, du Cap de la Trinité and du Cap Saint-Michel, which, by the way, Cap de Saint-Michel is our hero and heron land, um, piece of land. Um, Verhen has a very interesting history. It was actually captured by the British in 1760 during the, um, the Montreal campaign. It was part of the province of Quebec, then of Lower Canada, and then finally became part of Quebec. And it only actually achieved city status by uh, 1972. Go figure, you know, it was by the, before that it was just a parish, it was a village, you know, and that sort of thing. That's the church of um, Varenne, Saint Anne de Varenne. And then of course Varenne um, overlooks the, uh, you know, the St. Lawrence River. And then we have the 1681 census where we have Michel, Anne, their children, Anne, Gabriel, Jean, Marguerite, François, René. They have four guns, eight goats, and 30 arpents. Ah, voilà. So they have basically secured their land that whole time. So Michel would go on to continue to, um, you know, defend. He was a fighter. Uh, he was at Fort Frontenac uh, in 1684, was a commander there. Uh, he also was granted the, con the concessions, the fur trade concessions in Ottawa territory and um, would go on to create a mini empire, if you will, in terms of uh, building a, you know, a lasting legacy for his children and his grandchildren. So ultimately, um, he and Anne built quite the life for themselves. Uh, it didn't hurt that his, uh, his brother-in-law was Charles, um, but it, he certainly made his own mark. So um, just a re really remarkable man. Anne and Michelle would go on to live an extraordinarily long life. Anne would die only one week short of her 87th birthday um, she would uh, die July 16, 1725. They had been married an astonishing 67 years. It's just such a love story. I just, I, I just amazed by it. And Michelle would die less than four months later at age 84. One can only believe that they were really connected spiritually, and um, as is often the case. So, so I just, I, I'm, and they're both buried at Saint Anne de Varen in the. Um, what they call the ancient cemetery there as well. So just a really remarkable, remarkable couple. And of course, as befits such a remarkable couple, there is an Association des Familles Messier. And uh, I've posted the link for you as well um, in the notes. Just have a look. It's a wonderful website. Lots and lots of information. I was able to get um, deeper into the research than I even really needed to go. Because remember, these videos are meant to be snippets and not, you know, a PhD on each person. Um, and um, but the association of Femme Missy remarkable. And there is a huge book that was written as well that draw the website draws its information from. So have a look at that if this is your um, ancestry. Definitely worth a look. As always, I like to provide you with some resources. Um, 
And uh, one of the great resources that um, you might want to consider is joining a society. We have the Quebec Family History Society that's based in Quebec. And we also have the French Canadian um, Society of Michigan, which is a remarkable organization. And especially if you have uh, Michigan related, um, you know, descendancy and all of that from the French Canadians. We have the American Canadian Genealogical Society and we have the, uh, the um, French Canadian, uh, I'm sorry, the American French Genealogical Society as well, uh, which has been going on since 1978. Um, Maple Stars and Stripes, amazing podcast, Sandra Goodwin, one of my idols. Uh, a new addition to my uh, resource page is the French Canadian Genealogist. Absolutely love that website. It just takes my breath away in terms of their um, depth of knowledge and care. Uh, it's very, very creative. Genealogie Québec, Quebec Genealogical E-Society, and Genealogie Québec et d'Amérique Française complete that list of resources. Have a look at that. I've listed all the com in the comments and the notes for that for this um, so you can pursue at your leisure. I so enjoyed getting to know Anne and, and getting through the family connections and all of that it was truly remarkable. Um, how the tangled and you know how the families were interconnected. Um, just love, love the story. Um, and it was a love story. I mean, seriously, they lived together for 68 years um, and were, uh, you know, by 1729, they had 211 descendants. Remarkable. And uh, I would love to find out, other than my viewer who requested this, who else is related to this remarkable woman who made it all happen and connected the dots. And um, I want to thank her for her contribution, bless her memory, and be grateful that she graced our shores. And for that, we will be eternally grateful. Until I see you on episode number 11, au revoir.